and welcome! I'm Jade of Jaded Reader, and today I'm going to be doing a Strange the Dreamer book review. This book has been long past read. The sequel is out. It's well loved. Everyone's talked about it. I'm not doing anything new. However, I realized after my reread, which I just finished yesterday, I felt like I needed to have my own review. I had a lot to say and I just did a live show that I will have linked down below. In doing that, just stirred up a whole bunch of emotions and the only way I was going to be able to get this book out of my mind is if I talked about it in a video and had something to refer back to in the future. I'm of course first going to give a spoiler free review and we'll let you know that I did give this a 5 out of 5 stars the first time and the second time blew me away all the more. <laughs> Strange the Dreamer essentially follows two different perspectives. First, we have Laszlo Strange, who is an orphaned research librarian who is growing up in a world without magic, and he finds all of his magic and wonder through the whimsy of books. He has his head in the clouds and a broken nose from a large tome of fairy tales, and he is honestly just the sweetest person. But I'll get into characters later for right now. I'll just say that Laszlo has the waking and sleeping dream of visiting a place called Weep, which is a city that used to have a name but is now the untold or unseen city and he seems to be the only one to remember that it existed in the first place. On the other hand you have Sarai who I am indeed embodying today. Sarai is half goddess half human and she is in a tower overlooking the city of Weep. Now Sarai's storyline and the other half of the plot in this book is a little complex to give in a spoiler free synopsis but I can say that Sarai has the power of entering people's dreams and she does that by spewing moths from her mouth and having those moths land on the sleeper and she enters their dreams that way. However, Sarai is known as the muse of nightmares as she uses this power to enter people's dreams and give them horrific visions and sleepless nights. So you are following these two characters in a third person omniscient perspective. I personally love third person omniscient where it is talking about the characters but you can also try travel to different characters' minds and perspectives without having to switch chapters in order to make a new character relevant. I think this especially works for this book because you have a really fluid transition of thoughts and ideas and the plot and these characters, so being able to travel through the different characters' perspectives and minds as needed I think really works well for this book. <music> Going past the plot, I would say that this is a very character-driven book. Majority of this book is character development and just an interaction between characters. While the plot definitely is a force to be reckoned with, you almost lose sight of it in these character dynamics and not every single moment that the characters have is relevant to the plot. So instead, you find out a little bit more about their personality and that helps with the impact in the final part of the book where you have your main climax. I'm gonna go ahead and set this here so that I can talk a little bit more openly. My positives for the book are obviously overwhelming, but I do have some negative critiques of the book regardless of giving it five out of five stars. I would say that the plot is not going to be for everyone because it takes such a backstage pass. If you are a plot-driven reader, this might not be the book for you. However, the plot itself, when you look at it on a larger scale, knowing both Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares, I can say this as my second time reading through was phenomenal. There's so much foreshadowing and you can really see how well thought out the plot really was in the large scheme of things. But Lainey Taylor has a way of giving you a very zoomed in lens and then by the time you add up all of your lenses you have a gorgeous picture. Another thing that I actually have a criticism of is I wish that some of the characters would have gotten even more development. Yeah, that's right. I want a 500 page book to be longer. I found that there was a few characters such as Errol Thane that could have used a bit more time on page, especially because he's so integral to the plot and because his backstory and character is honestly fascinating. It's heart-wrenching, it's terrible, and I just wish that we would have gotten more time with him before the lead up. 
There's also a lot of complaints about insta-love in this book, and while I would say that the characters do fall quickly in love, I would say it's more of a first love than insta-love. So for me this wasn't a negative, it didn't take away from my reading experiences. Laszlo and Sarai have honestly one of the purest, sweetest loves between them, and it's very much so first love, and it's not initially lust or attraction, especially on Sarai's side. It's not until she delves into his mind and finds out who he is that she sees the beauty in him as a person. When I read this book initially, I definitely felt the impact of a lot of moments and themes in this. However, on my second read through, I had a bit of that lens exposed and I realized how dark these themes truly are and I want to make sure that I do what is right for me in this moment, that is to mention the triggers. Now I have to say right off the bat, the first time around I read this book, the triggers were not as apparent to me, I wasn't as understanding of trigger warnings meant to me. Now that I do, I would encourage you to make your own decision on whether this is the book for you based off of those triggers. Because there are immense triggers in this book. This book is terrifying. This book is not messing around. I will go ahead and have the triggers listed down below and let you know that I have not previously talked about these triggers in the past. I don't think they even registered to me. The way it is explained is so beautifully written, I can almost back away from it and just listen to the prose and and not the in-depth impact of what this book is. I don't know if that is a negative for some, but it was a positive for me because it allowed me to read about really important and sensitive topics without having to think about them critically in the moment and instead just read the story as it is and as it was intended. I really do appreciate that aspect, but that's not going to be for everyone, and so I do recommend you paying attention to those triggers because they are powerful and they are still there despite the beautiful lyrics way that they are spoken, it's still on the page. The audiobook narrator is also really fantastic. It's Steve West, who has narrated a lot of YA audiobooks, such as Ember and the Ashes, does the Illuminae Files, he does Aurora Rising and Aurora Burning, he does Maggie Steve Otter's Scorpio Races. Pretty much a lot of things I really enjoy Steve West narrates. While it is not dual narration, so it's just Steve West, I think he does a great job all the way through. If you are wondering about the editions of these books, because yes, they are gorgeous, they're beautiful. It's like my favorite cover of a book. This is the UK hardback edition and I believe it's the Illumicrate exclusive with the sprayed gold edges on this one and silver on that one and it is indeed signed by Lainey Taylor. I just love these covers and because I love them so much these are the ones I got so in case you were wondering. There's my non-spoilery thoughts. I do have spoilery thoughts. I want to go ahead and give you a countdown so that I can talk a little bit more in depth about this book. If you haven't read Strange the Dreamer yet and it sounds like it might be interesting to you, I have highly recommend it and I hope you enjoy it. And if you have already read Strange the Dreamer, go ahead and stay for the rest of this video if you'd like, but definitely I recommend you rereading the book because I can say I was really nervous going into it, not knowing if I was going to be disappointed my second read through if I had given it rose-colored lenses, but I found no. Not only was the experience enjoyable, it also had a new layer to it of foreshadowing and nuance. So go read it or read read it. Either way, if you are staying, I hope you enjoy, and if you are leaving, I hope you enjoy the sun or more stars wherever you are, and until next time, bye! Okay, here's the countdown for spoilers. So, three, two, one, there we are. I have to say, this time around, Minya did not do the same number on me as she did the first time. The first time I read Strange the Dreamer, I <laughs> wanted Minya super dead. Minya is one of the most fun characters to hate that I think I've ever hated. And I realized this time around that I didn't hate her, not even a little bit. Even when I was angry, frustrated, and enraged by her, I definitely felt for her in a way that I didn't before. Minya is suffering so much, and she has so much trauma, and I think that Lainey Taylor did an amazing job of realistically displaying Minya's trauma, while also displaying it in a really fantastical way of having her stunted and unable to grow. She is forever about six years old. She is bundled with rage and anger, and this time went into it understanding immediately where that all came from and what she was feeling. My heart broke for me. 
Minya. And that's not to say I didn't want to kick Minya just a little bit in some parts, but I can say for certain this time around, Minya meant more to me this time, and that's also after reading Muse of Nightmares as well, so I've read both of them, and this was just my first read-through of Strange the Dreamer, but I really saw the power behind Minya this time. It hit differently. For a reminder and a refresher, Minya was the oldest child in a nursery for the god spawn, or these godlike characters who were committing horrendous crimes and acts against the citizens of the Unseen City or the City of Weep. These children were completely innocent in what their parents were doing. However, the trauma of what Errol Fane went through and what all of the citizens of Weep have had to go through for generations led to the slaughtering of the children in that nursery. Many died and Minya being only six years old did everything she could to save as many babies as she could. You're thinking about a six-year-old child in this horrific situation. She doesn't know what she's doing or what to do, and this is just her acting in her most instinctual way. Her first initial instinct is to save. It is to save her playmates. This is the godspawn that we have today, along with her horde of ghosts that she can control. So Minya's entire thing is about control and about vengeance, and I just, there were so many beautiful quotes having to do with this. It just, everything hit differently this time. I don't know how else to say it. I can say for certain, Minya was the largest change in this read-through, as far as my emotions and reactions went, I went into this not hating Minya and I was immediately surprised at my emotions because I was expecting to hate her and then backtracked on that. So that is my first spoilery thought. Secondly, I have to say the foreshadowing in this for Laszlo being a god spawn was amazing. The first chapter, first few pages, he is described as a baby found without any understanding of where he came from and he is brought up and raised by these monks who thought he would die because he was the color of rain. He was gray like the color of rain, and then once he started to partake in their food, he gained normal coloring. So this was my first initial shock as far as the foreshadowing went because I knew I was in for a ride when in the first three pages they describe Laszlo, and it's showing you, almost spoiling for you, that he is Godspawn. So that was really exciting for me. I also found a whole bunch of things just thrown in as we went. It just all made sense. It all interconnected. Yeah, I just, I was really enjoying it. I also remember not understanding that this world and these characters all have two hearts. You have two hearts pumping. One is pumping blood, the other is pumping spirit. So there's two hearts within these people. I noticed that Lainey Taylor never breaks a beat and always saying hearts. It's always his hearts were beating or his hearts felt this. Point being, there was a a lot of that kind of world building aspects that just kind of flowed before. By the time that we were trying to figure out spirit and all of that and what Laszlo was, I didn't get that the first time through. I was just like, oh, okay, I guess so. I thought spirit was blood. I did not understand spirit the way I did this time around. And seeing how it is incorporated in was really fantastic, especially when Laszlo is doing his research through that entire phase of the books and he is trying to talk to Thion Nero. All of that was just just right in my face and I really felt like something clicked there and that I got it on a different level. So that was really fun as far as the world building aspect because anytime I try and talk about the world building aspect in this book, I just mentioned that the people are blue. I also can say for certain I did not remember how gruesome this book is. This book is a nightmare wrapped in beautiful packaging. And I mean that with no poetic nonsense. I can say for certain I was reading this differently this time and I wasn't just caught up in the whimsy of the words and how lyrical the speech and the descriptions were. Instead, I was really just reading the characters, reading the plot and wow, okay. There's a lot of horrible, dark things that happen in this, and the conversations and themes, they are destructive and gripping, and like I mentioned earlier with the trigger warnings, I really was taken aback at how terrifying this book really is, and it really was me reading and understanding what I was reading, but this time through, it like tore me apart because I already understood all the other dynamics that were going on, and it was just dark. 
I decided to put the quotes in the spoiler portion, though you've already read these quotes. I think that they are best in context. They are beautiful out of context, but looking into the different dynamics of all the characters and all the different things that I mentioned in the first half, these quotes and these things that really stood out to me are things that I think make it such a superior book. This is a very well-known quote, and honestly, often this quote is trimmed down and you lose a bit of the narrative in between. I think you're a fairy tale. I think you're magical and brave and exquisite, and I hope you'll let me be in your story. As far as compliments go, telling me I'm an actual legitimate fairy tale is pretty on par for best compliments. However, I also really enjoy the actual quote, which this time I read through, and I wasn't reading it with so much confidence. It's when you just read the quote as is, but you're reading it from Laszlo's perspective, and Laszlo being such a sweet and tender, uncertain human or god spawn, it hits differently when you have the narrative. I think you're a fairy tale and I think you're magical and brave and exquisite and his voice grew bashful. Only in a dream could he be so bold and speak such words because this isn't normal to Laszlo's character. And then he finishes off with, I hope you'll let me be in your story. Reading that in a bashful voice and having that context around it is just, it's why it's one of my favorite quotes, but out of context, it just doesn't hit as hard. One of my favorite quotes from Sir and I think really sums up how I feel about the story overall is this quote. You think good people can't hate? You think good people don't kill? Good people do all the things bad people do, Laszlo. It's just that when they do them, they call it justice. In the live show that we had for the Sisterhood of the Traveling Books Club, we got to talk in depth about villains and who really is the antagonist of the story. Is it Minya? Is it Errol Thane? Is it the gods that already died? Or is it something else. And the true thing is, is that all of these characters are villains and they're also the heroes of their own story. You have Minya, who saved children from a slaughter. You have Errol Fane, who rescued his people and destroyed the conquerors that had been raping, pillaging, and enslaving his people for generations. Or you have the Godspawn characters. So in that case, your villain has already been conquered. And does that make Errol Fane the hero? Because the hero just had an entire nursery slaughtered. It's really quite nuanced, it's complex, it's beautifully written, and it's how I can definitely sum up Strange the Dreamer and just the swirling of ideas and complex issues brought down and made into a true fairy tale. This one is one where I'm just gonna say the shortened version. It brings up Minya in my mind when I think of it. Vengeance ought to be spoken through gritted teeth, spittle flying, and the cords of one's soul so entangled in it that you can't let it go even if you try. I would never be able to describe something quite in that way, and I felt that. I have felt that in a moment of anger and frustration and wanting to bite back. I have felt those emotions, and it just being concreted and put into a book was just fantastic and really just makes you think. They just stood out to me a lot more this time. I felt like I got to slowly sip my wine instead of guzzling it down because I didn't know what was going to happen next. That's what it feels like reading Strange the Dreamer for the second time. It feels like I just get to savor and enjoy and really, really think about it. So that's why I wanted to share my thoughts with you today. I would love to know what you think about Strange the Dreamer. I'm sure most of you have read it all before, but yeah, I would love to know your thoughts. I don't think I'll ever get tired of talking about this book. I realized that today. I just spoke about it for an hour. I buddy read it for over two weeks and here I am filming a video on it. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are on it. What are some of your favorite quotes? Definitely throw a quote down below. If you don't have time to comment, go ahead and toss a blue butterfly emoji at me. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you're enjoying the sun or more stars wherever you are, and until next time, bye! <laughs> you have a really fluid flow. That's a weird thing. I should go back because I have to give triggers. There's too many triggers to not. To his heart's delight. Well, that one doesn't work because heart's delight is apostrophe S. No, I won't bring up Laszlo because he's in, he's just sweet. He's literally just sweet. That made me sound like an alcoholic. Red by Steve West. Oh, it's Steve West. I should have known that. What? You were just there. Do I have anything else to say? Any last final thoughts? No, I just want this to be short.